Hello, my name is Kappa. Uh, I am a mapper on Rhythia and Soundspace, and some people have asked me to make a tutorial on the map editor, and so that is what I will be doing. If you don't have the map editor already installed, you can go to Chrome and literally just search up Soundspace Quant Quantum Editor, and it should be this first link here. You can go to 2.3.0 latest and then you can click this link click on this and you would download this file go to your file explorer and then just extract it but i already have the editor we don't need to do all that so first before even touching the editor, we're just going to find a basic song to map. So we're going to go Stereo Madness from Geometry Dash. I'm just going to go to here because it's a really easy song to download. Download the MP3. Yep, that's the song. Uh, save audio as. Give it a second. All right, we'll put it in music. And we'll put Stereo Madness. Okay. And I'm going to show you all the complicated way to get the BPM. Because this is a much more reliable way. Rather than just searching up the song. If you can search it up and it's reliable, that's great. But for this reason, I'm going to show you all a better way if you all don't know. So you can go to... You can search up this application. Aero Vortex. And just download it download a local or media fire whatever but then we're basically done with google so we can open up aero vortex there it is and then we can open a file we can go to music stereo madness all right and then we can do press find bpm oh sorry i was wrong yep so it's it says it's 160 from the VPM detection results. To, just to make sure we can press tempo to just sync. Yeah, so this is already up. This is what it is. Press it again. So it thinks it's 160. So since this is a very known song, you can actually go back to Google and search up the BPM. Let's see if, let's see if it's right. And there you go, it's 160. So it's pretty reliable. All right, or you can get an OSU beat map. If y'all want a tutorial on that, I can get one as well. So now we can go ahead and open up our, why did I put stereo? Our quantum editor here. And we're gonna press create new map and import file. This is to import our MP3 file, our music of choice, which this time will be Stereo Madness. And here we are, we're at the editor. Luckily, we got lucky with this song, and it starts right on zero. But let's just say it doesn't, and we wanted to start right here. So you hear that? This isn't really synced, but to find this, we can move our little guy around right here and find it like it's like right there so let's just slow it down so playback speed is basically how fast the song will go so if it's at 10 it's really slow if it's at 200 it's really fast i usually prefer to go to like 30 to 45 if i'm getting really precise i go to like the 25 but i'll go to 35 for now you hear that It's right before it. So, yes, this is the BPM setup tab. It looks scary, but honestly, it's really easy. We already know our BPM, right? 160. So we put that in there. Our offset in milliseconds is this little number right here, this little number right here. Since our thing is a bit after this actually we're gonna try a bit after it so we're gonna try 12,000 since that's a bit after and see it's created this red red line here and so let's listen 
I'd say that's pretty accurate. And so now, so now these are your BPM ticks here. So these big lines are every, well, we would call them downbeats. So you can feel the beat on these. Two, three, four, one. You can use the metronome to really emphasize these on device one. You can have it synced to the snare drum. Divisor two is basically double that. Divisor three. So basically your divisor number is how many beats per downbeat. So the big ones are the downbeats. And so there are four beats, including the first downbeat. So one, two, three, four, until the next one. So if you wanted 10 beats, you go beat divisor 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, you have the next beat. These are usually for streams. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, now that we know how to use the beat divisor, we can get rid of this and we can properly set up our song. So since it starts right at the beginning, we can put BPM 160 and since it's at the very start, offset zero, we add the point. So. As you can see, these are synced to divisor two. So, as you can see, I'm not moving my mouse to place these notes because if you go to graphics and you press grid letters, these are the keybinds to add stuff to the grid. And so once you really get the hang of it, you can just add stuff really quickly rather than placing them individually. I will explain all of this later though. So I'm going to turn these off for now. Actually, I'll keep these on for y'all. So since these are synced to every divisor 2, B divisor 2, I'll be placing something for every 2 divisor. I'm using the scroll wheel to navigate through this right here. As you can see, it's all synced up. Sometimes the sound, the hit sound will delay like that, but it's it's synced, trust me. It's just a bug in the editor. So now, since that's out of the way, we can, let's say we want to go, we can go, we can go to this part right here. It sounds a bit different. Right, so it's here, here. Right there. This doesn't sync on every two divisor, as you can hear. But if you listen, or if you just slow it down and listen, it syncs like this. Yeah. That's just a knowledge of rhythm and you'll get the hang of it once you just start experimenting, placing down notes and knowing how it syncs and what doesn't, knowing the patterns. And so these are the main things you really have to worry about. The BPM setup, the beat divisor, and everything else is just kind of add-ons. So I'll explain the graphics now. So approach rate, is how fast a note will fade onto the grid. So that's pretty, that's pretty quick. If you put it down to 10, you can see it a lot before faster. If you put it really high, it's going to fade on faster. So that's approach rate. I put on, I put mine on 22. Track height. It just, if you can see up here, just adjust the height. I just prefer to keep mine on default of 80. I think that's fine. Cur cursor position, this is your cursor right here, this gray line. It adjusts where it is relative to your screen. Uh, I keep this one default as well. I keep it at 45. I think that's good. Now, approach squares, just show approach squares, as you would, as you would guess. Grid numbers give you numbers for each note. You can't really see them, but there, there's a three there. I don't use this. Some people do. I don't really know why. Autoplay is this cursor right here that goes through the notes. You can turn this off to just not see it. Quantum. Okay. Big boy quantum. All right. 
So quantum uses this snapping mechanism on the grid. So right now it's three, three. That means three notes for every three spaces. So three notes, one, two, three for every three spaces. So if we go to four, you see we can have one, one, two, three, and then some more. It's not really exactly four, but it increases the amount of notes you can have in a row. So you usually would want to use divisors of three to map quantum. So like nine, 12, 18, if you want to be really precise, like put notes in the middle. But I usually use like 12 or 18, sometimes nine if I just want to map quantum jumps, for example. Like just these quantum jumps, I'm just mapping like these, like that. And yeah, you can right click as well to select multiple notes and you can scroll with your right click to delete full section. So basically the snapping is just how much, how many notes do you want to be able to put on the grid? And the quantum feature enables that. If you don't turn quantum on, it's just always locked to the grid. If you turn it on, you can, yeah, go crazy. Yeah. And yeah, this is, I'm just undoing and redoing. I'm just holding control Z. You can just hold it. You don't have to spam it. You don't have to hold, repeatedly press it. You can just hold it. Auto advance. I don't use this. Some people do. Auto advance is if you place a note, it goes to the next grid space automatically, as you can see. I don't use it. It's kind of annoying because I like. I personally like the feeling of scrolling after each after I'm placing each note. I like seeing where I place it to make sure I placed it correctly, rather than having to go back. You can also turn off quantum grid lines. You see, it just you can still place them everywhere, but it's just less clutter for the eyes, maybe. So, and then we have. These you don't really need to worry about. Export offset is really only for Roblox. You don't really need it for Rithia, I don't think. Okay, patterns. Let's go over patterns. So let's say I have a pattern here, three notes. I'll put my approach right down so you can fully see it. If I select these three notes, I press rotate by degrees 90, it rotates it by 90 degrees. I can also do negative 90 and it'll go the other way. Scaling does what you think it does, scales it up, scales it down. This option is on by default, so it doesn't go off the grid. This is still on the grid. If you turn it off, it, it goes off the grid, as you can see. Apply rotate scale on paste. So if you copy something and you paste it, it rotates it negative 90 and scales it 150. I have this off because sometimes I have to copy paste patterns. Not usually. But this is only good for when you're copy pasting growing patterns. So like if you wanted this to slowly rotate and grow per, per se, you could put it at like negative five degrees and 101 degrees. And so every time you pasted it, I did that completely wrong. Don't mind me. If you pasted it, it would slowly rotate. You have to copy and paste it each time too. It would slowly rotate and grow like this. Okay, I hope that's easy to understand. So now let's talk about quantum visors. Bezier. I call them visors because it's fun to say visor. Don't judge me, please. So, Bezier curves are pretty simple to explain. You have three notes, you select them, and they curve. Wow. So, if you want to get really specific with your curves, you can press this button store nodes. And you can experiment and see what it would look like if the notes were in different places like this. And you can press draw and it'll draw it for you. Or you can press just clear nodes. Or if you want to add one, you can just store it again. So if you want to do this, store nodes. And let's say you wanted to add one, you can just reselect them and press store nodes again. And it'll add that. And you can draw it. And the, the divisor five, basically five quantum notes in between each. It's five, including the first one, like the beat divisor. So if I were to put two, 
let's say I did this and I put I did a slide and I put two one two one two and it ends on this one and that's how Bezier's work if you deselect curve Bezier this is bug where it doesn't do the first one I don't know why but it's a bug in the new editor but as you can see it no longer curves so if I turn this on you're gonna have to reselect it now it curves and as you can see it also added another one to the two divisor it keeps going smooth curve horizontal and vertical flip do what you think they horizontally and vertically flip the notes just like the mods on Rhythia, right? And then once you've done your map, you've mapped all of it, you're proud of it, you're happy with it, you can press playtest. I'll explain how to make playtest work later. You press export. First of all, you can press save and you can press, you can do stereo, madness. And then if you go in your files, uh, personally, my quantum editors and my documents, but find your quantum editor right here. Sorry, I went to the wrong one. Right here. Oh, I went to the complete wrong one. Sorry. Let me just go back. Personally, mine saved to this folder maps. They saved to this folder. So, oh yeah, when you press save, you choose a file location. I, ch I save them here. So then you can just go down. You can see Stereo Madness right here. You don't need to mess with these files. They just contain information for the map to where if you go back and you want to load it in, it'll load in. You can press load map. You can scroll down. You can press Stereo Madness and it will load in with everything you did. And then when you want to export it out to the public, so people can play it, you press export map, you name it whatever you want, so stereo madness, you can choose the difficulty, you can choose a custom difficulty, so you can just put something in here if you want it to be a custom difficulty, then you put your mapper name, mine scappa, you have, if you have a cover image, you can use that, if you don't, you can just like unclick this if you want to. Then you press finish and it'll have it named like this for you. You can name it whatever you want. Oh yeah, it has no element, so I can't export mine. But you will, once you export it, you will have a .sspm file that you can send to others and they can put that in their Rhythia game and play it. So how play testing works. You do not need to worry about all of this. This is all customary. You can figure this out by yourself, but I could show you what each color does, but these are just my colors. These are my opacity settings, if you want to look at them. So, to use Playtest, you can change path. And you need to find your Rhythia.exe file. And once you find the Rhythia.exe file, you can press Playtest. And Rhythia will open up. Rithia will open up and you will be able to play test your map as you can see right here. I know there's nothing on it. Yep, it has no notes. See, there you go. So, that's how playtesting works. And that's basically how everything in the editor works. Export offset is really only for rit is sound space. Metronome, we don't really use, but I showed you how that works. Import any, just import a BPM file, but you can also do that with BPM setup. If y'all want a more specific tutorial, tutorial if y'all have certain questions, please do not be afraid to comment or DM me. You can ask for my Discord, and I will send it to you. Alright, but yeah, that is everything to do with the editor. I hope y'all like this video. I hope it was easy to understand and I cannot wait to see y'all's maps. Bye bye.